uh, need to be generated in cash or the borrower needs to be uh, liquid uh, in order to pay us back uh, the debt. So in, in summary, um, we, there probably is a market for DFIs. We, we don't track the DFI market that well. We would like to work with DFIs and we do. Uh, we've recently done a transaction with IFC, for example. But we think there's enough out there probably um, for, for most of us to be involved. Um, yes. Thank you. So I'm an insurer. So I'm not. I'm looking at DFIs as a distant observer. Uh, I just see two things. First of all, and I think that uh, Asuko will be able to comment on that. I see the frustration from the side from the side of the of the commercial banks who feel that they are squeezed out of the market because the DFIs are taking all all the business. On the other hand, I also see uh, commercial banks taking advantage and appreciating the umbrella that they receive uh, when the DFI is involved in transaction. That's certainly the case when you have an A loan, B loan structure, but also simply being associated to a DFI that has a strong bargaining power uh, really gives them also, encourages them also to, uh, to work on transactions that otherwise they would probably not do. Bonjour, j'ai une voix qui est un peu cassée, donc je vais vous épargner le fait de parler en anglais, ça serait de pénalité. Euh, euh, je, je fais partie de Nazem, qui est l'agence marocaine pour le développement des énergies renouvelables. On parle de schéma de l'organisation des financements, il est vrai que nous avons une démarche qui est... Allô Euh, il est vrai que nous avons entrepris une démarche qui est assez innovante puisque nous avons mobilisé des financements concessionnels pour financer la plupart de nos centrales d'énergie renouvelable. Nous avons aussi émis des green bonds pour financer une autre partie des centrales d'énergie renouvelable. Toutefois, il y a un constat qui est assez alarmant, qui est assez interpellant euh, au niveau de l'Afrique. Dernièrement, j'ai vu par exemple en France qu'il y a un appel d'offres qui est sorti avec 5,5 centimes de dollars le kilowattheure alors qu'ils ont un DNI ou un GSI qui est presque moitié moins euh, que, que celui qui est du Maroc. Et tout ça parce qu'ils peuvent s'appuyer en fait ces développeurs dans des pays euh, développés sur des, finances, sur des financements avec des taux extrêmement bas et même inférieurs au niveau concessionnel qu'on qu peut mobiliser en Afrique tous les cas de prix, parce que est, il est vrai qu'on communique énormément sur le, la baisse du prix du kilowattheure en, en disant qu'il y a du 2 centimes quelque part, du 4 centimes autre part. Mais ce qu'il faut retenir, c'est que la plupart des, des projets qui se font en Afrique sont des projets qui ne peuvent se faire sans une garantie souveraine. Donc peut-être que, comme je suis le moins financier de tous les financiers qui sont là, j'interpelle sur le fait d'essayer de réfléchir et d'innover sur des outils qui permettent de mobiliser des financements qui soient privés grâce peut-être à la mise en place de certaines garanties qui n'existent pas en retour en back to back des garanties souveraines et de pouvoir ainsi lancer le développement plus grand des énergies renouvelables en Afrique. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are not, like my colleague here, um, from UK EF. I'll try again. Uh, my name is Subha Nagarajan, and I represent the Overseas Private Investment Corporation. And for those who are not aware, we are the US government's development finance institution. We are not US EXIM, and it's important to make the differentiation because we're not an ECA. Uh, we have a long track record, uh, track record of financing infrastructure, specifically power projects in Africa um, and across emerging markets. And this question of DFI additionality comes up constantly. And I think there are two separate tracks one has to consider. One is certainly direct financing and the volume of financing we're able to, to lend to projects to help them get to financial close. And then the other is certainly what we do in terms of structuring bankable projects, whether through our own advisory type activities in terms of getting projects technically and commercially 
um, to the right level so that commercial banks and others can come into the financing. And also from the product's perspective, whether it's political risk insurance, additional guarantees, etc. Our mandates, um, pretty much across DFIs, apart from promoting economic development, working with host countries to certainly um, see through their economic development programs, is to catalyze private capital. Um, and that private capital is long-term capital, and it's not just private sector investment, but certainly making sure there is room for commercial banks. And sometimes where we think we come to a head is when it comes to pricing. And that's something people often don't want to talk about. Do DFIs under private commercial banks, and do they do so just to crowd out the commercial banks to get the deals? Or do they do so because the underlying margins of these deals with all of the additional structure required to get the financial close require super competitive pricing. We also see a lot of concessional financing coming in and there's a lot of talk about blended finance. To what extent does blended finance actually help move these sectors, especially when we're dealing with new technologies? How much does that move those projects forward by helping to reduce the cost of capital? Or is it actually creating dependency? Um, Frankly, I think it really depends on the project. I think it depends on the TFI and their own goals for deploying the pools of capital they have. But I would agree that if we are to evolve and graduate, ideally we should see more projects closing, possibly using TFI tools like guaranteed products and less the direct financing. Um, because you feel more comfortable. But as a commercial lender, 
Um, is that sufficient for your comfort, or do you still require like a government guarantee? And also, is the the participation or the size of the DFI in the in the transaction important, uh, or is just the mere fact that you have some DFI financing next to you brings you that comfort? I think it would be very helpful to hear your perspective as a commercial lender. I, I mean, one of the first things you know is that. 